Um, so the, the topic of tonight's talk is knee injuries. Um, we'll talk about prevention and treatment of knee injuries. And so so that's some of the more common knee injuries and common knee conditions that are out there. There's three bones that make up the, the four bones, really the three primary ones. So there's the femur, which is the thigh bone. There's the tibia, which is the shin bone. And then the patella, or the knee cap. There's the fibula, which is a little bone that runs down the outside the leg. It's not generally so important in the functional that it is one of the ligaments that attaches to it. Important things in the knee, the cartilage, which is the linings of the bones, these are the cushions that are in the end of the bones right there. Um, it serves to, as I said, to cushion it, and then it also produces a fluid that makes the knee run smoothly. Um, the knee joint, when it's healthy, fluid that's there makes it 10 times less slippery than an ice skate on ice. It's almost friction free. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. Uh, material scientists have been trying to make things that work as well, and we're actually not able to do that. So, uh, more about the knee here. So, so the meniscus, guys, I've heard about this, and it's two. We call the this guy is a little of it. So there's the medium meniscus, which is the one that's on the inside part of the knee. Lateral meniscus, which is on the other side of the knee, um, and there's two of the knee. And then ligaments that stabilize the knee. So there's the ACL, and I'll get more detail about each of these. The ACL, the anterior peripheral ligament, the PCL, which sort of runs behind that, kind of behind that pressure. The lateral lateral ligament, there is one over here, and the middle lateral ligament. Next layer out, so the muscles and the tendons. Uh, as far as the muscles, is the quadriceps muscle, is the muscle in the front of your thigh. Uh, it attaches to the quadriceps tendon, which is attaches to the patella and kneecap. And that attaches down to the patella tendon, which then attaches down to the shin bone. The function of that is to help kind of straight the knee, to help keep the knee, to keep your legs straight and understand. The hamstrings are the Muscles that are behind the knee, and here we have some bending knee. And then I put it up here to show up so unfortunately that there's a long tendon that runs down all the way from the top of the pelvis all the way down to the tibial knee, or the iliotibular band or IT that I short. Um, it's, it's kind of important that it leads to or is, it's a contributor to a lot of knee issues, so I'll put it in there. So, prevention of knee injury. So, knees. Um, I was going to say knees are sensitive. So the, the kneecap in particular, uh, there's strenuous conditions, whether you're going down stairs or on hills or anything like that, can bear seven to eight times your body weight. So that means whatever extra poundage is on there, that, that amplifies in the kneecap. That's why knees, knees are very sensitive and they're sort of vulnerable to being painful and vulnerable to injury. So important to that, obviously, is weight control. Right? You don't think of losing weight as being something necessarily it's good for you know it's good for your heart, it's good for you know diabetes or whatever it is, um, good for your cholesterol, but it's also good for your knees. And knees are actually a very sort of sensitive uh, to pick up on, on little changes in weight. Um, I see a lot of people in my office who come in, they have knee pain, it's sometimes due to weight issues. Um, and when they address that it actually does really help that. I would say that people can ignore blood pressure until it's a real problem. People can ignore cholesterol until it's a real problem. When you have knee pain, you can't really ignore it. It's just kind of there, you notice it. Um, and sometimes that actually can help people to, you know, to make positive changes as far as their health goes. Uh, proper nutrition, this isn't really a talk on nutrition, but sort of, sort of we all know what's good for us. It's just a matter of kind of picking out those things as well. We have you know, fruit and water in the back and not cake and cookies, you know? There are things that are better for you than not. Um, routine exercise. So keep your legs strong. Strong muscles help stabilize the knee and help reduce the impact on the knee. Um, and that will also help, the, uh, you know, help, help stabilize and prevent it from, you know, from being weak and, then, and therefore having increased pain. Rest periods are important. You can do you know, it's, it's important to do exercise, but it's also important to take rest periods uh, in between. Avoiding high impact activities. I would say the exercise you're doing is better than the exercise you're not doing. So if you do something that really hurts your knees and you stop doing it and you just stop exercising, you haven't, you know, you haven't won any awards for that. 
find a sustainable exercise regimen, find some exercises that are good for you, and continue to do them regularly. But that's, that's really the important thing. Nutrition and health, I've talked about this, so the, the old saying, you are what you eat. If you eat healthy, you will be healthy, right? That's, that's a basic thing. Um, talk with your primary doctor if you have any specific questions, and I'll also be able to refer you to a nutritionist. Um, as far as general health goes, you cannot avoid every problem. They, they find you somehow, but when, when you have them, you're able better to deal with them. So it's important to stay healthy. Just, you know, if, you, if you kind of maintain the, like a car, if you maintain it, you put the oil in regularly, rotate the tires, check the brakes, do everything you need to do. Again, it's not going to make it last forever, but it will help it run better while it's, you know, while it's going. Um, we don't necessarily think of you know, health from a sort of a thinking standpoint, but if you think healthy, you'll be healthy. Again, if you know, eat healthy, you'll be healthy. If you think healthy, you'll be healthy. You know, form healthy habits. Happiness, as I say, is important. It's going to have a positive impact on health. This is well proven. Um, and then finally, bone health. Strong bones are important, right? So the bones, the skeleton, is what supports you. It's what gets you around. Um, vitamin D is important. You know, you know the the, uh, the skin doctors will tell you not to get too much sunlight, which is, which is true. You don't want to get skin cancer, but a little bit of sunlight is actually important. The sun helps turn your vitamin D into its most active form, which helps with calcium absorption and bone health. Um, obviously, taking in enough calcium is important for your bones. Don't necessarily think of it as a, a bone issue, but vitamin C, vitamin C actually is important for your bones as well. Um, and then protein, having adequate protein intake. There's a lot of people coming in for surgery now, they, they, you know, they look like they're big and they look like they've certainly eaten enough, but they don't eat enough protein. And when we actually check their protein levels, they, they're, they're too low. So we, you know, we work on things to, to get that better. So we'll just go over some uh, specific knee issues now and we'll kind of get to that portion of the So kneecap disorders, this is kind of a, a general broad area, but basically they are, they are the most common knee issue, the most common reason that people come to the US. So the orthopedic surgeon's office for, for knee issues, um, basically what you see is pain in the front part of the knee. That's, that's sort of the most common symptom. It's particularly bad when you're kneeling, when you're on stairs, Squatting or if you sit for a long time. Um, we'll, talk, we'll talk about startup. So, if you're, you know, you're on that three hour car trip and you go to get up and you just can't make those first few steps, it really hurts. It's typically uh, some sort of kneecap pain. The general sort of principle and general guiding problem with, with kneecap disorders is that the kneecap doesn't track well. It's a floating bond, as we said, it's contained within the tendon that connects the quadriceps down to the shin bone. Um, so the, it is, if it's not properly balanced with the ligaments on either side and the muscle pull um, on top of it, the, the, the bone gets extra pressure and it, it irritates it. You know, again, uh, uh, car analogies, it's like a car out of alignment. If the, if the tire front end is out of alignment, the tires wear unevenly. The same thing with your kneecap. It's going to wear unevenly. It's going to have extra pressure and be painful. Um, so again, it's, it's extra pressure on the judgments. So as far as the initial treatment for kneecap disorders, you have, you have some pain, it's you know, resting, right? If it hurts, don't do it. Icing it is, is helpful, it doesn't have to be extensive, but you know, 20 minutes or so, um, once a day, once or twice a day. And then not steroidal anti-inflammatories as long as it's safe to take them. Uh, things like Advil or Aleve um, are a common for the kind of anti-inflammatories. Beyond that, physical therapy, as I said, the motion is the biggest thing, right? That the kneecap is not moving correctly. So we do physical therapy to help improve the kneecap motion, right? Um, the muscle balance is important. So the, the, you know, the muscles are, you can see here, but um, the, there's two main ligaments that sit on either side of the knee. Um, they need to be in balance. I talked about that IT band. There's part of the IT band. That, that comes up to the kneecap and that can be tight and if that's tight, we'll pull on the kneecap and we'll kind of pull it to the outside. That will cause increased pressure, that will cause pain on the kneecap. Um, so the, the flexibility is important in the muscle balance. Uh, the injections, uh, talking about cortisone typically, uh, but also the lubricant type injections uh, can be helpful for these kind of things. 
Um, and then finally, surgery is actually pretty rare for this. So if there's a real, some real imbalance that can be corrected with surgery, we can improve the tracking. We'll do that, or that, that's really more the exception than the rule. It's like one out of every like 10,000 of kneecap disorders. Yes. So the next level sort of above that is what we call kneecap instability. So some people, their kneecaps don't track well, but they track really poorly um, to the point where they actually come out of place. So we have a couple of pictures here. So this one is clearly out of place. It's not supposed to be sitting off the left field here. It's supposed to be you know, part of the knee over here. It's a clearly out of place. This is one where it's a little bit less poorly out of place. It's still in, this is kind of a sort of a down bird's eye view, sort of looking down at the knee. Um, so this is the kneecap, this is the thigh bone, this is the front of the knee, and the back is over here. Um, so you can see the kneecap sort of looks like a check mark, and that contour should match up with that, and clearly they're not. <coughs> so this can happen either from trauma, from injury, you fall, you twist your knee or something like that, the kneecap can pop out, the ligaments can get torn, the kneecap can come out. Or sometimes it can be due to, to, again, to bad tracking. So there's a lot of things, either the, the ligaments are just overly loose, um, and that's an issue in some people. Um, so the kneecap you know, sort of have a tendency to, to pop out to the side there. Initial treatment, again, physical therapy, rehab, to improve the muscle balance, to improve the flexibility, you know, to, to rebalance the knee. Um, and then surgery, you know, in, in cases where uh, this starts to become a more persistent problem, surgery is sometimes necessary to correct it. Next condition is runner's knee. This is the this is sort of the IT band. Uh, this is the real IT band. Box. So with runner's knee, we see pain on what's called the lateral that's left of the knee. So the outside part of the knee. So kind of on this side, um, right over the side. This is due primarily to a tight IT band or iliotibial band. It's very common in runners. Part of the function of the IT band is to, is to stabilize your pelvis while you're walking. The difference between running and walking mechanically is, is, is that when you walk, you spend very little time. You spend really no time on a what we call single leg stance. Right? Both your feet are on the ground. One is swinging through, but you always almost always have both feet on the ground. Whereas when you're running, you land, and the next one goes, and so you're spending a lot more time on one foot. And in order to do that, in order for the pelvis to be stable, that those muscles have to tighten up, and that causes pain over there. In addition to that, there's a it's not just a nice little spread area, it looks kind of bad. Underneath that IT band, and between that and the, the thigh bone over there, there's a bursa or a lubricating membrane that gets inflamed. So, again, treatment for this initially stretch it, get the IT band stretched out, rest it, ice to the area. Uh, anti-inflammatory medications, and then next step beyond that, physical therapy. If it doesn't get better, physical therapists can sometimes help work and then to, to stretch that IT band out, get that more flexible. Um, that will help with it. Sometimes it's also just due to the, if, you, if your running style is a little bit off, if your pelvis is a little off balance, physical therapy can help with that as well to correct some of those problems. Um, <coughs> cortisone injections, again, that's, you know, what it's, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a problem when it's not getting better with these other things, and then rarely surgery to open it up to loosen that IT band, to lengthen it, and then, and then take the dosage out from it. Next addition. Now we're moving around to the front part of the knee. So patellar tendonitis. The common name for that is jumper's knee. Uh, typically in basketball players, volleyball players, this kind of thing, and it's you will typically feel pain just below the knee. So. Puts the kneecap right there and right there, and this is showing the again right there. So this is side view of the side of the kneecap here and the tendon right there. So um, essentially, what it is is a repetitive strain on the tendon. So the tendon gets pulled a little bit, pulled a little bit, pulled a little bit. With normal activity, the tendon does at the, you know at the big level, but the microscopic level does tear a little bit. It's normal. That's why I said before, rest periods are important. When you rest. It recuperates. It repairs the tissues back. If it doesn't do that, if you, you know if you tear, you know you have 100 fibers, tear 10 of them, you only repair back nine. Now you're down to 99. You go on day after day, and you keep on doing this. Eventually, there's just not enough healthy tendon there, right? So that tendon is getting pulled on, and that tendon gets irritated, and 
and eventually it becomes painful and, uh, and you know, it sort of adds up. Treatment, rest, as I said, rest is important, right? I mean, it, it, we gotta, you know, our bodies do have recuperative powers in them, right? A recuperative ability. If we rest it, they can get better. If we don't rest it, if we just say, oh, I'm gonna keep pushing through it, I'm gonna try to push through the pain, it's probably not gonna get better. It's just not gonna happen. Physical therapy, um, to do some specific exercises, and I'll, and I'll go through a little bit of that in, in a couple of slides now. Um, physical therapy, to, again, to strengthen up everything. Um, there's specific types of exercises that are important for this that help realign the tendon and help, help to strengthen it, and icing. Tendon and muscle strain. So there's you know, numerous, as I said, muscles and tendons around the knee. So any of them can get a strain in them. What a strain is, is, is a is the partial tearing of the, sorry, I'll go here, so partial tearing of the tendon. So kind of grade them, um, basically, you know, one through three, and then three is really sort of completely rough. And these are, these are really pretty, pretty rare. Most of the time, it's in here. So the, the, Fibers get pulled apart, get stretched out. Um, things you'll see, you'll see a lot of bruising around the area, uh, it's a pain obviously, um, will swell quite significantly depending upon the extent of it. Um, and it can really be with any muscle. The quadriceps, the front muscle, um, the, you know, in, in the tendons, and the hamstrings, um, you can get that really anywhere. So treatment again, it's a, so like, it's not like a broken record, but you know, again, a lot of these things are important. Resting, stretching, right? We used to say, let, let the tendon kind of sit. We actually found that stretching it improves recovery. You know it hurts when your muscle strain, pulling against it and trying to stretch it out really, really hurts it, but it actually is very important and it helps with the recovery. Physical therapy is very important for this kind of thing. And we call it eccentric exercises. Can everyone see this thing in the bottom here? So, you're the one in the middle. So, concentric exercise, right? The muscle building, right? Is you have a bench press, you push out, right? These muscles, your pec muscles tighten up, right? Your triceps muscles tighten up. That's what we call concentric. It's, con means with, right? So, going with direction, right? The muscles are tightening. Eccentric exercises are the opposite. The muscle's firing, but it's lengthening. So that says if you had the weight in your hand and you're slowly lowering it down, lowering it down, lowering it down, if you ever do exercises like this, you'll get through like one or two reps and you'll be burned out. It's incredibly tiring on your muscles, incredibly hard on your muscles. It actually is very effective at building up muscle. It's important for these strains because again, it pulls on the muscles. So it helps realign the fibers, it helps things heal up correctly. Um, so that, that's why it's important, it's hard to do. Uh, physical therapists can help you with it. Um, ice and heat alternating, I always get the question, you know, when do I ice, when do I heat? Generally, if it's inflamed, ice is better. For muscles, it, you know, you wanna, you wanna warm them up, you wanna loosen them up, heat is better. It's kind of the general rule with that sort of thing. Uh, medications, anti-inflammatories, again, to help with the pain, with the swelling associated with it, to help the recovery. It doesn't make it better in the sense that it makes anything heal, but it does make some of the symptoms better and it might allow you to do some of the exercises that you need to do to, to get it better. And then a gradual return to activity. So you don't want to decide you're going to go back up to the full speed that you're at before. You want to sort of slowly work up into it. Tendon rupture. So the two main tendons that rupture around the knee are the quadriceps tendon and the patellar tendon. Again, the Quadriceps tendon is the one above the kneecap, and the pelvic tendon is the one below the kneecap. I don't know if it shows up so well here, but this is the front of someone's knee. That's someone pushing their finger up, up above their kneecap right there. And it shows up. You can see that little divot in here. There should not be a divot. The tendon should be there. The divot happens because the tendon is torn apart. Generally, quadriceps tendon tears occur with people over 40, and the pelvic tendon tears occur. Under 40, it's not exclusive, it's not a rule. If your body doesn't know that you turn 40, automatically you're going to get that. It doesn't work that way, but in general, those, those are the things. Um, and these happen both, you know, pull the tendon and the decap. Usually, you know, it happens from, again, the, those eccentric type things, right? Where those things are very strenuous on the tissue. Your 
you go to fall and you're going like this and you're trying to stop yourself from falling, your muscles are tight, and it just literally pulls apart at both ends. And, then, and that's how you get those ruptures. Um, and you'll notice weakness in straightening the leg. You're not able to straighten the leg correctly. Um, surgery is generally the, the treatment for this. If it's a complete tear or a near complete tear, then, then you need surgery to, to repair. Um, surgery, a little thing up here, basically, one suture through the tendon, bring them up through the kneecap, or the vice versa, it's the other way, bring them down through the kneecap, put the two ends back together, give it a little bit of time, and let your body do its need to heal, and it's better than following that some rehabilitation, some physical therapy to strengthen up the leg. Meniscus tears. So meniscus again, these are these are the cushions of the knee. You have two of them, uh, one on each side of the knee, and you have two two per knee. Um, the things you'll see, so again, the cushions and then also the rounded, they kind of have a little bit of a bevel sort of shape to them. They make the top of the shin bone, which is flat and round, because the bottom of the thigh bone is round, so it helps your knee to bend properly to be safe. The things we see with it, pain with twisting. It might not hurt all the time. If you're sitting down and not doing anything, it, it might not be that sort. It might be kind of low grade sort of pain with it, but not significantly painful. Twist it, turn it, sometimes bending the knee or stairs or anything where the, the thigh bone is pushing past the meniscus and that makes it hurt not to the pain. Um, and they're usually specific to one side, so it either usually hurt on, on the inside part of the knee or hurt on the outside part of the knee, depending upon which meniscus is torn. They generally do not heal. The reason for that, this little diagram here. The blood supply to the meniscus comes in from the inside, or excuse me, from the outside and towards the inside. So you can see here it says red zone and white zone. So the red zone means good blood flow, the white zone means not good blood flow. Most of the terrors occur in the white zone, where there's not good blood flow. So they can't, they can't heal on their own. Occasionally they do occur in the red zone, those, those can be fixed, those can heal, um, but generally not. Uh, this is the most common reason for knee surgery. Bar none. I mean, there's nothing that's even close to it. Meniscus um, tear is, you know, they're, they're frequent, unfortunately. Uh, but this is this is the most common reason for knee surgery. Thankfully, in general, it's a pretty easy fix. We do what's called an arthroscopic vasectomy. We go in there with special camera and instruments, find the tear, trim out the torn part, leave the healthy part. And that usually takes care of the problem. It's, it's roughly about 10 minutes or so to do that. So it's not a major thing, but still surgery, right? So ligament tear is again four main ligaments in the knee. And although we reach it individually, there's the ACL, or this ligament right here, or the anterior version ligament, the PCL, behind that, posterior <coughs> ligament, lateral collateral ligaments, and the medial collateral ligament. So anterior cruciate ligament tears. These are these are things that used to be actually career and they are pretty common in athletes. Um, the, the we used to think that actually they were what we call a contact injury, meaning you got hit in the side of the knee and knee went down. Now we know that they're actually primarily called non-contact injuries. That you just land wrong and the knee is at the wrong angle and going in the wrong direction, and the ligament tears. The function of this ligament is to prevent the shin bone from going forward, so, so it's <coughs> relative to the thigh bone, and then also prevents rotation. It's actually very important. When it tears, it actually the knee sort of partially rotates forward, the outer part of the knee rotates forward, it's sort of like a partial dislocation of the knee. It's not complete dislocation, but it's a partial dislocation. It is quite painful. <coughs> um, you can see here that knee should not look like that, right? These don't bend that way. Um, and, and if you watch any sports, you know, to see, see people who've had ACL injuries, they just drop to the ground. And it's, it's very painful. Their knee swells up quite significantly. Um, can't really walk on it initially. No. It takes a while. Unfortunately, this is becoming a more common problem. We're not really sure why. But it is definitely becoming more common. I, you know, it's no one, uh, no one high school agent here, but um, 
remember, I see a lot of kids who come in with this kind of injury. And I ask them, I say, how many kids in school do you know who have an ACL injury? Four or five, you know, typically, right? And I turn to the parents. I say, when you were a kid, do you remember anyone getting an ACL injury? Almost invariably say no. I mean, they might, you know, one or two, maybe, right? Um, not really sure why it's becoming more common. Obviously, some of it is just more, you know, more participation in athletics. Um, some of it is, is uh, you know, just more people are, kids are more intensely participating in athletics. They're not taking off seasons, they're not switching between activities. Uh, you know, it used to be we had, you know, uh, you know fall, let's say it was football season, went through basketball season, summer, we did something, or spring, you did something else, right? Now kids are playing the same sport throughout the year, they sometimes are playing multiple sports, they're playing multiple teams. Um, maybe contributing to this. It is also more common in, in female athletes as, a, as opposed to male athletes. It's roughly for the same sort of hours of participation in sports, it's about four times more common. So pretty, pretty significant. Um, the treatment, if you have an ACL tear and you're a young athlete, or even sometimes if you're not such a young athlete, surgery is the answer. You have to do what's called the reconstruction of the ligament. The, Ligament that's there cannot heal. It will not heal, so we take some sort of tissue and we run it between the points where the old ACL was. Showing that, um, and that replaces the function of the ACL. It's never as good as the native ACL. It is pretty close, but it is never as good as the, as the one that was there before. There is extensive rehabilitation after surgery. It's a few months of time for athletes. Um, generally don't return to sports until about nine to 12 months after the after the surgery, assuming they, they're able to rehab properly and everything is good. And people who are sort of not candidates for the surgery, either older, not athletic, um, physical therapy is helpful. You build up you know, the muscles in the back, all the tips of the muscles in the front, and it will help stabilize the knee. Most of the time there's enough residual stability the ACL has a specific function. Again, it prevents that rotation of the knee and the, and the forward translation, as long as you don't do any activities that make that happen. So uh, straight line running, or straight line walking, running, that kind of thing, doesn't test your ACL. Generally okay. Skiing, not okay. Right, that, that strains that area of basketball or anything like that. PCL tear, so posterior cruciate ligament. This is the cousin, if you will. This is the ligament that runs in the back of the knee. It's jolly, this is the posterior translation of the knee. So the shin bone goes backwards relative to the thigh bone. Um, this is much, much less common than ACL injuries. Uh, it's about 99.9 to 1. Um, much less common. It's a, it's a, for a variety of reasons, it's a bigger ligament. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger. Um, the type of injuries that we see don't generally strain the PCL. Um, it is common so in, in automobile accidents and dashboard injuries. The dashboard hits against you. Um, some of these new uh, knee airbags uh, might be helpful for preventing some of these injuries. Recently, recently they may not be, but I guess that'll, that will remain to be seen. Um, generally, if it's an isolated injury, meaning only rupture of PCL, don't need surgery, in general. Again, if it's unstable, you do. Um, usually, though, they're part of a more extensive injury. They said it's a pretty big ligament, so to injure it, you generally have to do something else with it. Medial collateral ligament. So this one is the ligament on this side over here. And the job is to prevent inward motion of the knee. So the knee going in sort of like that. You bend that way, but inwards like that, toward, towards the other knee. Any injury where you either get hit from the side or you fall and you need to twist in that way can stretch out that ligament. Um, sometimes they are complete tears. This is a this is kind of diagram of it that's showing a complete tear there. This is a you know, picture from an MRI. The neoplatter ligament is in there. And all, this, all this whitish stuff and grayish stuff, that's sort of the remnants of the ligament right there. It's pretty clearly torn. Isolated injuries of this, even high grade tears, complete tears, can be treated without surgery. They need to be braced. Those can, these 
Injuries can heal on their own, as opposed to the ACL or PCL, which don't heal on their own. The reason for that is the, the, the disc ligament, as opposed to the ACL or PCL, are actually outside of sort of what we call the knee joint. You know, so in the knee, part of the knee joint, the knee is surrounded by a capsule, the fluid that's in the knee is contained within that capsule. Anything outside of that can heal with blood supply to the area, and blood supply helps to heal. Um, so rested it, bracing it, ice helpful for symptoms, anti-inflammatories again helpful for symptoms, um, and then physical therapy if need be to, to get the knee moving again to improve the function of the knee. Lateral collateral ligament is the other side of the knee, so this over here, again that prevents outward motion of the knee, so the knee's moving away from one another. Um, much less common than MCL injuries, and sort of for the same reasons with the, the PCL. In fact, PCL and LCL injuries tend to go together. They actually went together sort of as, a, as a back. Um, again, it's a pretty stout ligament, it's pretty big, um, but it can sometimes rupture. Again, with isolated injuries, meaning that nothing else is injured in the knee, it can be treated sometimes without surgery, but usually, as I say, they're part of sort of a larger package of injuries in that case. Um, they might need surgery if they're unstable and involved in repairing the ligament and we're uh, reconstructing it. We're putting some sort of graft material in there to help stabilize it. <coughs> Bursitis. So, in the front part of the knee, even outside of the kneecap, okay, there's several with a bursa. There's multiple in them from this. And sometimes those will get plain, right? They get plain. Does this picture show up okay? You guys see that? You can see how swollen that is right there. There's just like a, a bubble in the knee, right? You can see that right there, right? So that's, that's a swollen person. So these membranes, any, anywhere there's tendons and bones close to each other, those membranes are there. They help lubricate it, help it move nice and smooth. Um, they can become inflamed and swollen like that for any sort of variety of reasons. Sometimes injury if you fall on it it to it, it gets really big. Sometimes infections, sometimes they do have infections in there. Um, and then sometimes just overuse, you know, for people who do jobs, particularly when they work on their knees a lot. Um, let's say you're doing uh, flooring or tiling or something like that. People who work on their knees a lot, if they're not, even if they are using knee pads sometimes, uh, that will cause that to, uh, to become inflamed like that. Fibbing really depends on the cause of it. If, it, if it's due to the Overuse, you just inflammation or sometimes injury. Sometimes the fluid can be drained. Anti inflammatory medications, resting and icing it. Infections generally do require antibiotics and sometimes drainage for the infection to, you know, to definitively do it. So, arthritis. So, this is sort of the, you know, the end of the line here, right? So, if you had an injury, sometimes that can lead to arthritis. So, what, what is arthritis? So, I'm giving a talk in April, and everyone wants to know all about arthritis. This is kind of the, the previews of it. So, as we said, there's the linings in your joints, right? There's the cartilage that lines the bottom of the, the thigh bone and the top of the kid bone here, and it helps to cushion and lubricate the joint. Over time, for variety of reasons, that cartilage can wear away. It can become worn, and then what happens underneath that is you get the bone exposed, you get bone spurs. It's a little bit maybe. Over there, um, and then eventually also because it's supposed to be cushions there, they turn space and goes out. So this is an X-ray to show what a normal knee is supposed to look like. Right, so there's nice even space between these arrows here, and then the other side, you see that the joint space is very narrow here, so it's completely worn away. It's kind of narrow here as well, right? so it's kind of, kind of narrow. And it's un Typically, it's uneven like this, where we're really worn on one side than the other. Variety of causes, again, it's, it's kind of part of a larger topic, but the you know the end result basically is that the joint lines wear off. Um, osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis. Um, it's you know, far and away the most common. Um, it's basically just wear and tear on the, on the joint lines over time. Um, other causes are injuries. If you break a bone around your you know, around your knee. The alignment can be off and put some extra pressure on it. If you actually have a fracture or break in the bone that extends into the knee, that disrupts the cartilage surface. That can cause it to have arthritis. And then meniscus injuries. If you lose part of the meniscus, um, that can cause arthritis to have 
There's autoimmune causes of rheumatoid arthritis. I don't want to get too much into the weeds of that, but that can also basically why it sort of destroys the, the cartilage. Um, diagnosis, x-rays. Don't need anything fancy to diagnose arthritis. X-rays are very helpful. Labs occasionally, again, that's if you're looking for things like rheumatoid arthritis or, or for psoriatic arthritis, it's why it causes to see what, what exactly the cause is. Cartilage health, as I said, it's aligning the cushions of the bone. It helps the joint move smoothly. Cartilage is like a sponge. It has no blood supply into the actual cartilage tissue there. So I'll put it in this picture this way. When you put weight on it, it squeezes the fluid out. The fluid goes into the knee. When you take weight off of it, the fluid goes back in, like the sponge, right? It absorbs the fluid into it. That's why moderate weight bearing exercise is good. That helps to keep the cartilage healthy, keep it bathed in the fluid within the knee that, that it needs to be healthy. So treatment for arthritis. Again, rest, right? If it hurts, don't do it. Icing medications, um, again, to help manage some of the symptoms if it's painful. Canes, things that take pressure off the knee. So if your right knee hurts, you hold the cane in the left hand opposite, because that's the way you walk, and that mechanically helps to reduce the pain in the, you know, in the affected side. Injections, cortisone injections, again, to reduce inflammation, to reduce pain within the knee, helps the symptoms, doesn't make the arthritis go away, it just makes it feel better. There's lubricant injections, again, can help it kind of move a little bit smoother, help with some of the pain. None of these are, are pure also, they don't, they don't make the arthritis go away. The final sort of treatment for knee arthritis is knee replacement. Most of the time, it is a total knee replacement. Most people will raise out and say, the deal with the knee replacement is you put a metal cap on the ends of the bones, and the thing that you see here is a plastic space or a plastic piece that sits between the bones and helps keep them separate because the bones are not touching each other and they don't hurt. There are also partial knee replacements, which you just replace one side of the knee. These are only useful or indicated when it's really very isolated and arthritis to that one part of the It's usually due to some sort of trauma to the area or some, or some condition that very specific to that part of the So finally, um, last thing we're going to talk about, fractures, I'm not going to dwell on this, so many, you know, any bone in your knee basically can be broken, right? So the, the kneecap, the tibia or the shin line down here, Right? Treatment is really depending on what's broken, how badly it's broken, um, and then you know, then a little bit based on other factors, age, mobility, that kind of thing. Um, but basically, any fracture or, or break into the joint, surgery should be considered for it. Because the cartilage that's there is very sensitive to small differences. Um, some places, if it's off by even two millimeters, which is not a lot, right? Two millimeters hard to see, right? If it's off even by two millimeters, that can lead to, again, early arthritis with your knee. So it's important to have that aligned correctly. Um, so this is just showing, this is the, the kneecap here. Run some wires through it, put the two ends back together, usually they split like that across the middle. This is the shape or to be here, you can see. So you've got a bite taken out of it, so we're going to, get to fix that, restore that bone, and then hold it together, and then this, obviously, to help realign the bone, to help throw it apart. So this is the, the end of my talk. Um, I'd like to thank a few people, Kate Dabrowski, she's the, the VP for Marketing and Public Relations at the hospital. Uh, she's the one who sets up these talks and helps make them work. I think they're nice. Uh, Fran Ravella, she's our Wikipedia like, coordinator. Um, and she's the one who comes to say you want to talk, gets us all set up to do this. And most of all, uh, all of you for coming here tonight and uh, spending some time. I, I actually really appreciate doing these things. I kind of like it. Um, I think people who are in, you know more informed as as patients do better. I think. So I think it's important to, to have these kind of things.